Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for waking us up this morning, starting us on the way. Thank God for blessing us to see this day. Thank God for prayer. Thank God for praise and worship. Thank God for you. Um, we give honor to the Lord and um, we reverence him. And to, our, to the best of our abilities, we reverence him. And we spend every second, every minute, you know, decreasing that he may increase. Um, if you have your Bible, and you should, turn with me to Luke, the 10th chapter. We thank God for this platform and this avenue and this way of ministry for such a time as this. Um, we embrace it. Now we don't fight it. Um, we thank God for the awakening. There's all kinds of movements going on um, right now and all kinds of wheels and movements. Um, but we thank God for the, uh, for me, the, the church awakening and um, to, to what we thought we knew, but we're really learning. And that's how we have carried ourselves to the extent that we would be considered non-essential and that um, the world would be in a crisis and not think to look toward the church of Jesus Christ, which um, at one time was considered just outrageous. And we thank God for the awakening and uh, all the articles and all of the news reports and the scandals, the backsliding and the carnality. Um, it has all caught up with us. And God has um, allowed us to be slapped in the face with the reality of it. And because no one could do anything to the church except God allow it. And Ezekiel knew this very well, that everything that he would go through, God was allowing it. And, um, and, I, I, and I cannot fight the Lord. I will not fight the Lord. Simply try to um, be still and allow him to mature me from the inside, that I would be consistent in my walk with him. And you can walk with him. Um, patriarchs have walked with him. And you can walk with him. And so we thank God for Jesus and for waking us up this morning. In Luke, the 10th chapter, thank God for Jesus. And God for Jesus. And we'll be reading verses 25 through 28. And it reads like, and it goes as this, and behold, a certain lawyer, and Lord help us now, spirit is before, you know, the mind. And your spirit knows things your mind haven't comprehended yet. And we're trying to bring my triune together here. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Not with the right motives. He stood up and tempted him. And he said unto him, and this is in red, what is written in the law? How readest thou? So Christ put it back on his lap. What you read in the law, how does it read? It is what it is. And he answered saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with mm -hmm. all thy heart, mm -hmm. and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, and read, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. This do, and thou shalt live. If you do this, you'll live. If you do what? Everything you said, you read. 
If you do it, you'll live. We're going to use for a theme today, reconciled by love. If you do this, you'll live. If you do this, all all can live. If you if you just do this, but for you, for me, for you, individually, if you do this, you believe. In the ESV, it says, and he answered, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself." And so he forces us, you know, as we have to reconcile so many things, this is just another one. And he, and he, and he forces us to look at not just COVID, not just flu, not just economy, but he forces the church to also look at the shape that the world is in. And much of it falls back on the church lap. It's almost like what I always tell my daughter, that people run from the Lord. When, and when people run from the Lord, you know, when they get into hard times and into certain situations, they come and drop it back on the church lap. You know, when, when, when they backslide and leave the Lord, when they go through things, all of a sudden they come to church and they want everything to stop to fix their mess. And, and it always finds its way back on the church lap, back in the church house. You know, I'm going to do what I want to do, say what I want to say, live like I want to live. But when push comes to shove, it all falls back on the church. And we believe the, the, how many people have showed up at the church or showed up at my house unexpectedly at all times of day, all times of the night. Because need drives you past your logic. And, all, and when you have a real need, all you want is answers, and you don't care what time you get them and how you get them. You wouldn't believe the people who would just show up at your church or just show up at your house when they're in trouble. It's happened many times. And so we have to, so, so many things have to be reconciled with the church of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the Christian, but I do know about the born again believer. And, and 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 when you look at little Paul describes it in First Corinthians as this: love is patient and kind. Love is not envious or boastful, or arrogant or rude. Paul looked at it and said, "Love is none of this. It it does not insist on its own way." Remember, we said love gives and keep on giving, where lust take and keep on taking. You want to know if you're in a love relationship or a lust relationship? Just look at is it is it giving or is it taking? Love gives and keep giving. Love will give until it give out. Love lust will take until there's no more to take. And then some people have the nerve to lust and love. They they want to give all they have and and but take all you have. But love never insists on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. And don't get this mixed up with the people who just have a habit of saying, you irritate me. Now, there's an irritation that go past that. That's a purpose irritation. Some folk irritate you just by waking up in the morning, just by how they yawn, how they laugh, how they breathe. I mean, you know, you look at the one they see and they say, what can you do about that? You know, <laughs> But there's a real irritation, an evil irritation, a resentful cause that it does not rejoice in the wrongdoing. It's nothing to rejoice in punching somebody who's walking down the street who, for no reason. That's to see if you can knock them down. There's no rejoicing in that. There's no rejoicing in, 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 in taking people's savings and, and breaking in windows. There's no rejoicing in breaking in cars. And there's no rejoicing in that. What are you rejoicing in? He said, but rejoice, 
But love rejoices in the truth. He said, love never ends. You rejoice in the truth and it never ends. So he describes love in that manner. He's allowed by God. Remember, the Bible is written by holy men under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And he has fired to end this, that this is what love is. So God says, when, you, when, the, when the, the Bible reads, to, you, like to love with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. You may as well not, you may as well not try to get the love from your neighbor the way you want it if they can't follow the first part of the scripture. And, and your neighbor asks yourself, well, really, that's what you're seeing. What, really, what you're seeing is people loving their neighbor as they love themselves. That's really what you're seeing. It's just mine. It's the first part of the scriptures. Because to really love your neighbor the way God wants you to, you have to love them with the agape love God is loving you with and loving me with. And when he says all, well, what does he mean by all? Well, all means all that's all that 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 means and so you say what does all mean well all means all and that's all all means and then what you mean to love with all your soul and with all well all means all and that's all all means i can't make it mean something different than all all means all and that's all all means so when i try to when i try to cut it up and, and separate it you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to give it all, that means I leave nothing behind. And so for, for me to really function, as Christ would have me to function, I have to love the Lord, my God, with all my heart, which I find in my humanity impossible, with all my soul. I don't even know what all my soul is. With all my strength, I, I, I've been in a situation where I demonstrated strength I didn't know I had. With all my mind, well, how, what's all my mind? And so for me to fulfill scripture, I have to be a Holy Ghost inspired and smeared by God himself to please God himself. Because I don't even know what all of my heart is. I know what I do know. That is deceitful, wicked, above who can imagine. But I don't know what I don't know. Watched a movie once and a, and a man said about a woman, help her, she's a good person. She just don't know what she don't know. Sometimes, I mean, you just don't know what you don't know. Watch another movie where they can get the point across. You know, you'll learn things and see things you never knew you never knew. So when you follow on with the Lord, you start learning things you never knew you never knew. And, you, and you're and humbled by how much you don't know. Not boastful, you're humbled by it. And so the church is, we, sometimes we get torn, like we're, we're torn right now between how do we reconcile Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, with, with Matthew, the fifth chapter? Now, how do we reconcile with, with bless out the peacemakers? For they shall be called the children of God. How do we reconcile bless are ye when men revile you? You know, just, just, just smear you and lie on you and talk about you and in and, and, and a derogatory way for no reason and persecute you. And she'll say all men are evil against you falsely for my sake. Like how do we reconcile that with also the understanding that to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. It's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. 
a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. That's one thing they get on my last or when it's weeping time, laugh. Why are we laughing? When it's laughing time, why are we weeping? Some people, they're going to get it backwards. No matter. If there's people, when you say stand up, they sit down. When you say sit down, they stand up. But when it's a time to weep, it's a time to weep. When it's a time to laugh, you don't want to miss that moment. You want that time to laugh. You need it. It's a time to mourn. And it's a time to dance. And that's easier said than done. Because it's hard to get a dance out of, out from, from out behind a morning, a real morning. Morning, morn, morning in your soul. And then for God to say, but, it's, but the, the day coming with your dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace. But right now it's a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence. This ain't the time to be running your mouth on social media and running your mouth everywhere. This is this is a this is a, a this is a you a you dot com moment. This is a your personal relationship with the with the Lord type type of moment. This is this quarantine has been about your own personal relationship and development in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it's a hand it's a handful of us that have been called to do that and minister to God's people as He leads. But the majority of people you're listening to are not called to do it. This is a call from the foundation of the world. It's not something you happen into. Real ministry is birthed out by God and, and, and it's established before the foundation of the world. There's a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Whenever I would be with people who were older than me and wiser than me, it was a time to keep silent. You had to invite me in a conversation. You had to ask me a question. And many times my response was, well, what do you think, spiritual father? Or what do you think, spiritual mother? Or what do you think, elder? About what? Would you just ask me? Because when you a sponge... A time to love and a time to hate. Hate in the Hebrew means love less than. It's a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And the Church of Jesus Christ trying to reconcile with all of the, with everything going on around us. How do we reconcile scripture? Rightfully divide and reconcile. As we have to do all things on the wings of love. That you're never told, even in a time of war, to hate as far as despise your enemy. You're just told to love less than the cause, love him less than the cause. But it's not, I wish you would, I wish, I, I hate you, I despise you, I wish you to go to hell, go to hell. And then you would never, the born again believer would never go there. And some of the things you're looking at is a direct result of a life of a, of a lack of Christ in the lives of people. The question is, where is the love? Where is the love? You can't get it in your community. You can't get it in their community. Where is the love? Some folks they don't get it. They don't get it from the church they go to. They don't get it from the house they live in. Where is the love? A, 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 a movement without internal fortitude can't last. Studies show in 2018 where blacks were the victim of murder, 88% of the time blacks were the offender. So does black lives matter or does it only matter when someone else killing me? 
In 2018, 88% of the time of my people were killed, my people were killed by my people. As a matter of fact, from 1976 to 2005, 94% of, of the time black murders were performed by black people. 94% of the time from, two, from 1976 to 2005. As a matter of fact, this was the norm for over a century. When is it going to really matter? From 2000 to 2005, blacks murdering blacks was three times the rate of Hispanic rate of Hispanics murdering Hispanics and over seven times the rate of whites murdering whites. Where's the love? Where's Christ? But but they would have us to uh, 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 they would have you to believe that it's it's a black thing, it's just a black problem. But I beg to differ because in 2016 there were 3,499 murdered white, 3,499 murdered white. And 2,854 times, they were murdered by another white. Where is the love? In 2016, that same year, it was 2,870 blacks murdered. Less than white. And 2,570 times by other blacks. Again, less than white. Where is the love? You only see what they what is being magnified, but God is missing everywhere. In 2016, there were one million two hundred and forty-eight thousand one hundred and eighty-five violent crimes. Now, for people who don't know, violent crimes are I break down into four sections: murders and non-negligent manslaughter. Number two, rape and rape is a violent crime. Rape is a violent crime. That's why people who suffer rape suffer a lot of traumatic or post-traumatic effects because it was an act of violence. I don't care how subtle the enemy tried to be. Number three, robbery. Not theft, robbery. Theft is folks that want to come in your house after you after you leave. Robbery is people come in right when you're there. They don't take the car while you're gone. They take the car while you're in it. And number four was aggravated assault. 1,248,185 cases of that in, in 2016, which was an increase. And every year is an increase. It was an increase of, of, four, of 4% or of 4.1%. Where is the love? Where is the love? Now, how do we reconcile, like, how do I, how do I fight um, uh, for what's right and love who I'm fighting? How do I stand against my oppressors and love my oppressors? How does my voice be heard without hating? Well, one thing that's missing is that addicted love. See, when God talks about all and all and all and all, and like I said earlier, all means all, and that's all all means. When you talk about all, that's an addicted type of feeling. That's an addiction to. That's an addiction to Him. You know, for lack of a better way of saying it, it's a it's an addiction to Him. He asked him for an addiction. And, and an addiction type of love. And you know what addicts will go through for what they crave. I was watching some recently and they were trying to explain, uh, they, were trying, they were trying to explain why heart could be broken into so many pieces by who you love or by, or by, who, or by who you've chosen to love. And they made mention in 1993, individual studies who claimed to be in love had their brain scan to show neural activity. 
The map showed vivid colors over the gray matter, indicating clearly that this romantic love phenomenon activates a flood of a dopamine in the carotid nucleus, which is the center of the brain, in exactly the same way that cocaine and nicotine affect the brain. Meaning that love is not an emotion. They said love is rather an addiction. They say, oh man, your brain responds when you in love, real love, the same way Splunk craves cocaine and, and craves nicotine. When chemicals are released in our brains, we feel giddy and euphoric so much to the point that we can be that we could be so in love that we lose the desire to eat or sleep. You know that that love that wakes you up at two and three in the morning to walk the floor, or that love that you go to sleep with the pillow wet from tears as you talk to the Lord, not about problems. You're not crying because of problems. You're weeping because of the love affair, because of the 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 gratitude and being gracious and overwhelmed that that what He has showed you about you which would make the average person dislike you or think something wrong with you, he's loving you through it. See, what, what, what blows my mind is how he loves who the world considers unlovable and how he commends his love toward us that while we are yet sinners, while we are yet his enemies, Christ died. He didn't wait until I get together to love me. He said, for you to get it together, I'm going to have to love you. Because if I, if I wait to love you when you get it together, you will never get it together to my standards. He said, so I have to love you where you are for you to ever be where I want you to be. He said, I cannot wait to love you to get hell out of you. I have to love the hell out of you. I can't wait to validate you. When you get it right, I'm going to have to love you in order to validate you or for you to feel validated. That's why people who really love the Lord, they're not looking for your validation. They're not looking for your pats on the back. They're not looking for your, for your that a boy, that a girl. They're not looking for you. Oh, you're such a wonderful preacher, prophet, singer. Like they, they don't care about those compliments. They're not doing it for that. See, when you love in the Lord, it's almost like a person who buys Christmas gifts, but who, who's not looking for any gifts in return. It, it's just what we, it's just what I do. Not looking for anything back. But there's a love that there's a real love that makes you respond like an addict. Well, I'm lost in love. I'm driven in love. I can't sleep. I can't eat from thinking about he or that my soul love it. It takes my sleep away. It makes me fast. I forgot to eat today. I was so in love. Then now I've chosen not to eat because I'm so in love to get closer to he who are my soul love it. it I got a wonderful book from that doctors Robert Hemfield and Dr. Frank Murnoff and I, I believe it's Dr. Paul Meyer. In this, it, they have a groundbreaking book on recovery for the codependent relationship, where they where they explore love as a choice, not an accident, not by chance, but a real conscious choice. And when you truly choose Christ, you just chose Christ-like love. When you really choose Him, now now remember, it's like a it's like a person who buys Christmas gifts and gives them away without looking for something in return. That feelings are not hurt at the end of the day. That everyone they gave a gift to, then give them one back. Remember that. It's not about, so, so in essence, when God calls you to love, he calls you to love people who he knows may not love you back. 
That's why you want to be careful who you choose in your inner circle for sure. You have an outer, outer circle, an inner circle, and an innermost circle. Peter, James, and John were part of the innermost circle. The disciples were the inner circle, but the innermost was Peter, James, and John. You have to be careful of who you invite in that circle, especially in the innermost circle. Just be careful who you choose to love and to put in this circle, rather. Because you want to put people in this circle, if you can, that will love you back. You know how hard relationships are um, with people in them that love someone who don't love them back? Or love is not reciprocated? And, 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 and some people say, yeah, see, that's the kind of relationship I'm in. Uh, perceptions are real to the person perceiving it. Prove it. Because some people, it don't matter how they love, it's going to fall short with some people. It don't matter how they love. It's going to fall short with some people. It's almost like I can get a couple in my office and, and she spend too much time with the kids. Then the next couple come in, she don't spend enough time with the kids. And you would think that, man, he needs to be with the person that he just loves. They, but if you swap them, they'll find fault with that. If you switch them, good. You go marry him, and you go marry her. You all, you with the wrong people. They'll find fault. With, they're gonna find fault with that. It's almost like damned if you do, damned if you don't. See, he forget he got a wife while he's spending time with his kids. Okay, then the next couple come in. See, he forget he got kids while he just want to keep hanging out and spend time with me. What what do you want? Because because when it ain't real love, it goes into fault finding. We're for constantly finding fault. <laughs> he wanted to know the there was a, a, a real question. A real valid question. Not a joke. It, he, he, tra- he, he said it with the wrong motive. But it's a real question. Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? In his mind, because I know, but I bet he don't know. So, so he's going to teach the word, the word. It's like people who say, I'm praying for you. Then tell God exactly what to do. You, when you pray for someone, you don't tell God what to do for that someone. You give him back his word. And you pray your, his will. What, what, how is that? I, I ask for your will concerning this matter. And you give him back his word. But, Lord, I'm praying for my husband right now that you will make him uh, um, to shut up and that you will make him come home and that you will make him, when he come in, uh, spend time with me instead of watching the game and that you will make him. You don't tell God what to do. He's trying to teach the word of the word before we pray. So I know something wrong with him. And Christ looked at him and said, well, what is written in the law? Lawyer, how did you read it? When you read it, how did you interpret it? Which is very important for, 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 for us to listen to people and, and, and sometimes to hear. When you read what you read, what did you hear? When, when, uh, today, so, uh, I asked my daughter after services, what you learned today? What you learned today? What did you learn? What did you get? What did you hear? As I prove her and as I, and as I, and as I listen to her and make sure she's ready for life when I leave here, what did you hear today? What did you learn? What did, you, what did God say to you? We have a fireside chat. He said, how read is thou? He said, well, what I read was thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. 
There's a psychology to Christianism. He evoked the mind in this matter. As a man, think of so is he. And he said, and, 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 and last, and thy neighbor as thyself. You want someone to love you right and treat you right? It starts with them loving themselves and treating themselves right. If you don't treat yourself right, how dare me even think you're going to treat me right? If I don't treat myself right, how dare you think I'm going to treat you right? If I lie to myself, I'm going to lie to you. If I'm honest with myself, I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm brutally honest with myself, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. So you're going to say, you're too darn honest. And I'm going to say, because that's how I am with myself. Ooh, Pastor, you too are. You too. Ooh, well, because, because I don't give myself a break with foolishness. So I can't. So I'm not gonna give your your foolishness a break. <laughs> you see, you love your neighbor like yourself. Ooh, that's saying a lot. Because you can expect something out of someone they're not giving themselves, and you're setting yourself up for disappointment. You can't. You can only give what's in you. Mm-hmm. And for things to be reconciled by love, we have to invite Christ back in the picture, all the way back. Some some folk already have fallen off from how they uh, for how they started off with with trying to get closer to the Lord and trying to you know it's about me dot com it's about self ambition it's about you know I don't want to hear about anything other than Christ in the times like this people dying and 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 struggling financially and race conflict. I don't want to turn on my news and see Dwayne Wade and and and, and, his, and his unclean wife with his with his, with his wannabe a uh, girl son prancing around. Uh, this time for seriousness. It ain't time for 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 for, for, for perversion to, to take center stage. But that just show you the mind of America, especially the mind of black people. Who cares about your friends and son right now? While Black Lives Matter trying to have a movement, COVID killing folk, economy crashing, who cares about a prancing, switching wannabe? <laughs> Some things you're dealing with, don't nobody want to hear about it, same. Because things are too serious. They're too serious. And don't be deceived by what you see. You have to live the life of a born-again Christian, even if it cuts you going in and cuts you going out. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, as is our manner, we love you. We pray. We adore you. We let every member of our body see you. What can we do right now other than resting? Reverence you. Submit to your authority. It's a mighty fortress, smeared by you and anointed by you, able to work the office of God, which is to believe in Him whom God has sent. Okay, watch 
important to Tommy. It's the mentality that the people have to be willing in the day to day. So whatever you say, whatever you do, this girl what I call to you. Thank you, so we bless them at first up. And we can good for them that they just that just practically use us. And we love the world at the same time. We pray for the anointing. We pray for the anointing. We pray for the anointing. The very smearing of you. We pray for the anointing. We pray that lost souls would come back to you in time by right now. That people would turn back to the church of Jesus Christ. Not for fame, not, not for souls, not for God, not for offers, but for the building of the kingdom of God. Who stands on the wall and refuses to come down. Missing her in her spiritual form. And let no weapon formed against them prosper. Thank you again for covering this church and covering every member and keeping us alive, working, healthy. Be not financial situations in need. Covering our children. Blessing us to go into this mean, evil, sick world and come back healthy. Healthy, not just from COVID, but healthy from hate. Healthy from bigotry. Healthy from looting. Maintaining our testimony. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. That the phone has been rung and, it's, and someone has been murdered or killed or died to COVID. We, I have a right to thank you. And to say I appreciate you. And all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. We honor you and we reverence you. Anoint us on the fast to seek your face. Anoint us on this fast to seek your face. And knowing us to get closer to you and to and, and to and, and to be mindful of you. Yeah. Mindful. Right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Again, give us an appointed time to come back out. But we dare not rush between Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, Amen, amen. God bless.